Hey guys, this is short notice um, live stream. I'm just going to wait a few minutes and let the notification go out. But um, there's some things I want to talk about as far as this virus that's going around and how it's going to affect um, my business. Um, I got new information as of like a half an hour ago, and I was just going to kind of update everybody. And this is like the quickest way for me to update everybody is just to do a live video, talk about what I need to talk about, and then um, see how everybody else in the community is doing. Um, so it's Sunday, it's 3.30 p.m. my time here in Ohio, and uh, the state of Ohio governor just announced that the state will be going to what they're calling the full lockdown um, or stay at home order. Basically, everybody is said to stay at home and not leave their houses except for um, essential things like groceries, um, gas, medical stuff, stuff like that. But if you don't have to go to work, don't go to work. Um, that affects me in two different ways. One, I'm a mechanic by day and the transportation industry is considered essential. So I will still be going to work. And on that note, if you ever have to take your car in during this time to get service, please clean it out. Um, don't have trash and all that crap in there. And you can even go a step further and try to like spray some Lysol and like disinfect your interior. Um, we do the best we can to protect ourselves, but um, protect yourselves as well. Um, as far as this lockdown and the company, uh, I'm still getting orders in every day. Um, Caleb's Aquatics, hello. Um, I'm still getting orders in every day. I got six orders packaged up and ready to go to the post office later today. Um, those orders are just from today. Um, so people are still buying stuff, um, still selling medications and fish foods online. And um, so I look at it as I sell medications and fish foods. That's essential to um, people's pets. So I am still doing everything I can to keep rolling. Um, any products that are bought, I am still shipping out. If something was to change where I can't do that, um, everything on the website will just get marked out of stock and won't take any orders through there. Um, but so far I'm still shipping out and I don't plan on changing that because people still need their medications. They still need their water treatments. And, you know, with limited access of going to local stores, um, online is kind of the route to go. That's how I've been getting my stuff. That's not hobby related, just stuff around the house. I'm still ordering online. Um, but so I, I'm going to talk about yesterday. So I had a lot going on yesterday. I drove up to Flip Aquatics and I picked up some shrimp and I also picked up matten filters um, I haven't had matten filters since like last fall and I wanted to get those back on the website. So I went up and picked up, picked up a bunch of matten filters. Um, I got to do the lift tubes for them and then they'll be back online. Um, the, I picked up more blue dreams and, um, some red cherries from them because I've been selling out of both of those. So to keep up. Um, I had to go get some more from him. Typically, I can keep up with production off of what I'm actually breeding. And the blues are breeding true, um, like 100% true. I'm not getting any calls out of my blues right now. Um, so I'm supplementing them with some of his, which that's where my blues came from anyways. It's the same shrimp. Um, so some of the orders are going to have adults or larger shrimp, and that's because I had to bring in some extras. Um Brought in the reds. I, I, I got hundreds of shrimp from him yesterday. So when I was up at Flip Aquatics, he's about three hours from my house. Um, I ended up making a day trip out of it. So I went up there, left there, went to Agno Aquatics, which is, uh, I guess, south of Cleveland. I don't know the actual town it's in. It's kind of like, I think it's by Parma. Um, I've seen LRB. Um, Lucas Bretz has been there before. I've seen Ohio Fish Rescue has been there before. So I wanted to check him out. And, um, 
the owner recognized me from my channel. He follows my channel. So that was cool. I talked to him. I had to kill some time because I was going through the Ohio fish rescue and um, they were out rescuing some fish and it was taking longer than expected. So I had some time to kill. So I hung out at Agno Aquatics and um, it's a really nice store. It's it's like the, the classic little mom and pop, you know, mom and pop style shop. Um, it was very clean and they had a lot of variety of fish, which was awesome. And they had a ton of the same products that I sell. Um, they had the, you know, some of the North fin foods that I sell. They have the Fritz products I sell. They had a ton of stuff. And um, the owner, I want to say his name's George. I'm terrible at names. If I recall, his name's George. Um he was super nice and we talked business and he was like super open with like telling me where he gets his fish from so he can help me find better and better sources um, to buy shrimp for my store. So like super shout out, like big thank you to them um, for being so kind and helping me out. And, um, you know, I told him where I get some of my stuff from and, you know, it was kind of a, a nice relationship um, as far as that goes. And, he actually uh, hooked me up with the contact of a guy that's local to me that does wholesale fish. Um, and it's a guy I heard of a while ago and I just didn't follow up with him, but I got the guy's price list and the price list is like the same as um, what I'm paying for my fish that's coming out of California. Um, so that's huge. That means I can go locally and hopefully um, hand pick. And even if I can't hand pick, at least I don't have to pay for shipping and um, it's already in the same water that I have. So it's going to be like a win, 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 win situation. Um, and that will allow me to really get more variety of fish to be able to sell too. Um, because when I order from a wholesaler online, um, I have to order mass quantities to make it worth the shipping. And being that if this guy's local and I don't have to do mass quantities, I can have more variety. So I'm super excited. I'll probably give the guy a call. It's a, it's a guy like me. Um, he runs this wholesale business out of his house. And I think he's only, I mean, probably like 15 minute drive, maybe 20 minutes, but probably 15 minute drive from where I'm at. So like, I'm super excited to reach out. Hopefully, you know, this will work out and I can go check out what he's got. And I know he breeds his own angels um oscars and piranhas um i don't plan on selling um oscars or piranhas but the availability to get those if somebody wanted a special order them um special order those i can get them um locally so that's awesome i do have coffee today um caleb said where can i message you um the easiest way to contact me is through facebook um you can search SC Aquatics. I believe it's like listed as like 614 fish possibly. Um, if but I'm sure, let me, let me just verify Facebook. If you search SC Aquatics, you'll see my blue logo. Um, it'll pop up and you can send me a message through Facebook. If you don't have Facebook, you can always email me. Um, sales at 614fish.com. And that goes right to my cell phone. So I get those as well. Um, but typically I like to use Facebook because it's like that instant messenger. Um, you can carry a conversation fairly easily. And um, yeah. Bearded fish, bearded fish keepers here. Um, how's it going, buddy? I hope everybody's doing well. Um, Chevy Fish is here as well. Um, just kind of talking about how the state of Ohio is under a lockdown and this starts tomorrow at midnight. So Monday night at 1159, uh, the state goes into lockdown because of the virus. And I'm just saying that I'm continuing to do all my orders. People still need their fish things. And, um, I'm listing SC aquatics as essential to, um, staying open and I will continue to do orders um, the only thing that will stop me is if the post office, for whatever reason, stops shipping. But as long as they're shipping, I'm shipping. And um, just taking precautions uh, with with everything that's going on. But um, so 
back to the story yesterday, it was at Agno Aquatics. Um, if you're local to like the Cleveland area, or even if you're not, like, I think it's probably only like a two hour drive from Columbus. Excuse me, maybe a little bit longer, but check them out. They had a lot of fish there. Um, super awesome people. Um, I believe I met, I think it was the owner's wife as well. Um, both super nice people. So after leaving there, I did take some video and some pictures. I might put together like, I mean, the video might be like a minute long, but I might just throw together like a minute long video and just post that because um, if I get bored at work or something, if we're slow, then I'll have time to mess around. But I went to um, Ohio Fish Rescue after that. And they rescued some sweet fish. I don't know if they've talked about it. They obviously recorded the rescue. Um, I don't know if they talked about it, So I don't want to say what they rescued because I don't know if it's officially out yet. But it's super sweet. Um, something I'm interested in seeing the progression of how they do. And, um, you know, it's not the normal, like... Um, I don't know, normal big fish that gets rescued. You know, it's not like an Oscar or something like that. It's it's different. Um, they they already have um, at least one or two of these fish, but uh, look forward to Ohio Fish Rescue releasing that video. And they release a video like every other day, so it should be out pretty soon. So I was there, and while I was there, I ended up, um, they had like 200 cichlids. And they were convicts, and they needed to get rid of them. Um, they were uh, like a side rescue. They were rescuing some monster fish, and this lady had like 200 of these convicts. They had to get rid of them. And um, so I, I took them from them, and they are listed on the website. So if anybody wants to um, help support Ohio Fish Rescue and help support me in a way, um, they're listed for $2.99 for, I believe, they're just black, standard black convicts. And, um, I posted it on my Facebook group or on, not on my group, but on my page. Um, they're two ninety nine a piece. And then if you like want to order like a decent amount, like if you got somebody local that wants to split shipping with you, um, I'm doing discounts on bigger ones, on um, bigger orders. Um, they're two ninety nine because I got them for free from Ohio fish rescue and I'm rehoming them. And that three bucks is just paying, uh, for my time and effort that I'm investing into keeping these fish, um, well fed and medicated. Um, they were great at Ohio fish rescue. They're fine in their tank water, but anytime I get new fish, even though I know they're coming from a great place, I still medicate and they are in my flow through system. So whenever a new species or group of fish goes in that tank, I'm treating, um, 260 gallons worth of medication. So that can add up. So I'm not trying to make a profit off of them. Um, depending on where you are in the country, a black um, convict can go from, you know, five bucks up to like 10 bucks, um, depending on the size and stuff like that, too. I figure two ninety nine. I'm not, you know, getting rich off of that, but it's going to help cover some of the costs. You know, I drove like 400 miles yesterday, so that's going to help with that. And, um, you know, just the all you guys know all the, the costs that are associated with a fish room, you know, heating and all that crap. Food, medication is the biggest thing. Medications are expensive. And I buy the big jars of medication. So when you're talking like over, you know, well over a hundred bucks just for one medication, and then you're doing multiples, like all that adds up. Um, so yeah, if anybody's into cichlids, I'm personally, I used to have cichlids. I'm not into them anymore, but, um, I have a ton of them and they need new homes. Um, so spread the word. If you know anybody that's into cichlids, um, here's a chance to get a little bit of Ohio fish rescue in your own tank. Uh, bearded fish keeper said, yeah, I saw it. Good job. Keep up the great work, bud. We are as well. I got some pluckos for you. You got some pluckos for me? Who you got plugos for, Bearded? I might have missed something. Um, Mark says, I started working from home this past Wednesday. I wish I was in a job where I could work from home, but being a mechanic, 
there's no working from home. You have to be at work for that. And uh, what's, I guess what makes me nervous about this whole situation is that uh, in the United States, I, I believe from what I hear, um, a lot of places outside of the United States, like mechanics are either hourly or salary. In the United States, um, all mechanics are flat rate. So what that means is if there's work, we get paid. And if there's no work, we don't get paid. And we're paid per job. And the easiest way I can explain this to you is let's say you go in for an oil change and that oil change pays a half an hour. Let's just say, and you know, for easy numbers, I make $20 an hour. Well, if you come in for an oil change, it pays a half an hour. I get $10. And what that does is it makes the mechanic work fast. So if it takes me three hours to change your oil or it takes me 10 minutes, I get paid $10. And where that works out is like, let's say you're doing like an engine rebuild and it pays, let's just go like way out there. Let's say it pays 40 hours. They're saying, I'm paying you 40 hours of labor to rebuild this engine. My goal is to do it as quickly as possible. So maybe I have it done in like two and a half days. And so I get paid 40 hours, even though I only took 20 hours to do it. So when you're working as a mechanic, there's possibilities of making a lot of good money because in a normal work week, so let's say a 40 hour work week, let's say typically I make 70 hours. So every week I'm getting paid 70 hours of labor time, even though I'm only physically working 40. And what that makes me nervous is, is since that dealers are essential and we still have to go to work, we're still going to be there, but not making any money. So in my mind, it'd be better for us just to close. And then um, in the state of Ohio, they changed the law to where you can claim unemployment right away because of this whole virus thing. So if, you know, we close, I can immediately sign up for unemployment and I don't, I don't, I've never had to do that. So I don't know the whole process or what it pays out from what I heard. It's like 60%. And I don't know how that works when you're flat rate. So is it 60% of my hourly rate or is it 60% of like my W2 from last year? You know, I don't know how that works, but, um, so that's a little, uh, unnerving to say the least. But, um, as far as SC Aquatics, we're, you know, still doing everything I can to get these orders out and because people still need their medications and supplies. So I'm still doing all that I can. Um, so I hope, I hope all you guys out there are doing well and staying healthy and um, doing what you can to uh, stay busy. I know there's a lot of people that I've seen through social media that have been uh, sent home to work from home for like the last week or so. And after like day three of having their kids at home and trying to do work, they're kind of losing their minds. So, you know, uh, you know this could be going on for the next few weeks. Um, I think Ohio is under lockdown until April. What is it? It's like two or three weeks. So we'll see how this goes. Uh, Mark says, I just got two 40 breeders, some new plants, and 13 gold white cloud minnows from local Petco, getting a stand from Lowe's today. Super awesome, buddy. Um, I've honestly never have had a 40 breeder, and it's a tank that I want to play with. And um, majority of my tanks all right now are 20 longs and 29s. I do have like a bunch of 10 gallons. Um, I do have a couple 55s. I have a 75, but, um, my go-to size right now for doing the fish things is 29 gallons. It's the same footprint as the 20 longs, just with the extra capacity because it's taller. And that allows me on my, my rack, my import rack, I'm, I'm calling it allows me to do 29s and 20 longs on top. And, um, I'm at the point where I'm going kind of like full speed into getting fish now. And I really need to start expanding the, the racks out. Um, you know, I, I've talked about taking down rack system one and two, redoing it and matching it to the other side of the room. And that will give me the most tank space. And that's something I still want to do. 
and um, you know, there's a there's a lot of things that are, are set in motion that's going on with SEO Quarks this year. Um, I'm doing a lot of work with Ohio Fish Rescue. You know, we've become like really good friends. Like, I I'm I'm glad that. I went with Lucas Brett up there last year. I got invited to tag along to this like YouTube kind of hangout, like YouTube creator hangout up there. And Lucas had me tag along and then um, just kind of kicked it off with um, Ohio Fish Rescue ever since. And, um, you know, I'm helping them out with their tank stands and some ideas for them. And they're helping me out. You know, they're trying to help me grow my channel and helping me out with fish. And kind of um, whenever they have like mass, like nano fish brought in, you know, Tetra, stuff like that, um, I'm going to try to help them get them here. And that way I can do the medications on them, make sure everything's healthy. And then um, depending on what it is, you know, either resell it, like sell it off or rehome it. Um, older fish, fish that are not. Uh, high quality will obviously be a rehome. Let's get these out to people that will um, give them good homes until they, uh, you know, live out their life. Um, with like the university stuff, where like they had the university drop off, you know, hundreds of fish from a breeding project at the school. You know, stuff like that is not a donation. Like it's not somebody's pet that they're giving to the fish rescue to like keep forever. Because if you give one of your monster fish or any fish to the rescue and that's your pet, they won't rehome it. They'll keep it forever. Um, but with these other fish, these these um, convicts were somebody bred them and then just didn't know what to do with them. And they're like, here, take them. So in that case, I'm reselling them to get them out um, to everybody. And, you know, somebody that wants a convict, you know, these these aren't like feeder fish. I know that Josh said that somebody wanted all the convicts to use them as feeder fish. And they're not about that. Um, Ohio fish rescue is not about, um, giving fish away to use as feeder fish. And that's another reason I'm kind of selling these is because, um, when you buy feeder fish, if you go buy goldfish, maybe they're 10 cents a piece or, or I don't know what the retail price is on a feeder fish people aren't going to pay $3 for a feeder fish when they have to buy a ton of them. So that's another reason why these are listed for $2.99. Um, they're on the lower end to keep pricing low because I did get them for free. Uh, I'm fully transparent on that. Um, I'm just doing this at the $2.99 cost to offset the cost of having them. And then also to keep people from being like, I'll take 50 of them and then I'm going to throw them into my piranha tank or something like that. <clears throat> and this is not a scheduled live stream in case anybody wants to know. Um, I've been working on my beta barracks today. Um, the plumbing for the drain systems done. So all the tanks are drilled bulkheads are installed for the overflows and the drain pipes are all down to the sump. So now uh, I got to do fresh water in and I've, I've been kind of going back and forth on ideas on that. Um, I think I want to try using a power head to pumping water to the top into a, um, what's kind of going on in my head. So all the drain pipe is two inch PVC. And I'm thinking about doing a two inch PVC pipe across the top and using it as like a reservoir and then drilling it um, and tapping it for airline tubing to trickle water into each tank. That's kind of how I did rack system one. It's just airline with feeding water to each tank. So I think I might try that and see how that goes and um, make basically a reservoir on the top and then probably have to do like an overflow pipe back to the sump in case too much water is getting pumped up. I can release it back to the sump, but this will allow me to have all the betas on one system so I can do um, water change on multiple tanks right now. There's only 10 tanks, but this rack I built out of like spare stuff. Um, I have these spare plastic shelving units. Um, this will allow me to have, uh, I think it's like 50. Oh man. How many is it? 
15 or 18, I think, tanks. And these were these tanks are actually bigger than I originally wanted. Um, nothing wrong with that. It's more space. Um, and being that it's a sump system, like they have a ton of water volume. It's just that um, I wanted a little bit smaller tanks that way I can fit more in there. So if I do this again, I'm going to step down the size in the uh, there a ton of stickers and stuff on top. I was going to get one of them out. It's the critter cage is what I'm using. Uh, I'm using the medium size. And if I did it again, I would switch to the small and see how those go. But this will allow me to um, have huge water volume. I mean, huge by beta tank standards. But it allows me to run like one heater. And I can heat all their water up and um, <clears throat> make it more manageable for me. But the biggest goal, and let me make sure it's live. So I was up kind of late last night. So after running to like Ohio Fish Rescue, to Flip Aquatics, to Agno Aquatics, um, I was working on the website a little bit last night. Congo Tetris. I sent out an email to the email subscribers. So they got first dibs on them last night. Congo Tetris have been on sale um, all month long, but I chopped the pricing down even further. Um, I'm, in the email, I called it the super special. The Congo Tetras are sold in groups of six or ten. And if you buy ten of them, uh oh, sorry guys, the group of tens actually sold out now. Um, that's crazy because they weren't sold out last night. Um, I guess I'm going to pull my orders. So, a group of ten was like three ninety nine a piece. And let me see what the group of six comes out to. We get a group of six. They're four eighty three a piece. Um, I know Aquarium Co-op was saying that these guys, from a video I saw a while ago, these guys are like in the upper nine or ten dollar range. I thought um, at least out west coast, out that way. So sub five dollars is super cheap, and. Um, yeah, so those are on like super special. And then I did list the convicts online. That was put in the email with a direct link. And that uh, getting payment notifications. I don't know if somebody just ordered something or not, but thank you. Um, the convicts are on. The only way you can get to them, I did say in the email that it was not listed at all. And then after I sent that email, I did put them on the website and there's no cichlid like tab under the freshwater fish to buy them. You have to click on all fish and that's something new. I just added that last night. So if you click on all fish, it brings up every fish. So like sometimes you just want to, there goes another order. So whoever that was, thank you as well. Um, you have to go to all and then it's like the second row. It says convict cichlid hobbyist bread. And then you click on it. And um, I have a video of these guys kind of swimming around on the Facebook group or on the Facebook page, but um, they're, they're good size already. They're, I say majority of them are definitely like inch, inch and a half. There's a couple of smaller guys. Um, I'm going to try to ship out the bigger guys first, just to create more room in the tank. And, um, yeah, so I did add the all fish and then I did add, um, beta fish. What you see is what you get tab. That's also listed under where you go to like, look at fish. Um, there's nothing posted in there yet. Um, because I'm still building the rack. This rack will allow me to label each tank and then I can do pick. I'm going to do pictures and video of each beta that I have. I did. I've gotten betas in. It's been well over a month now, and they're in my kitchen in glass jars, and it's a pain in my butt because I'm water changing them every day, and doing all these glass jars really sucks. It's very time consuming, but um, so that's another reason I want to get the system up, and I'm hoping that I can have it um, at least with water and running today. I'm doing substrates, and since the tanks are big enough, I'm going to put plants in them all. Um, a, that's coverage for the beta, make it feel more comfortable. It's extra um, filtering of the water quality. 
you know, allows plants more room to grow out so I can, you know, propagate plants out of my fish room into all these new tanks. But that's something else that's new on the website. Like I said, I did all that last night. I'm trying to think what else. Um, I did get all these new botanicals going. Um, the They're not live on the website. They are The products are online. You just can't get to them yet because the email subscribers are going to get first dibs at this. It's kind of like a Patreon. It's like a free Patreon. So you sign up for the email. You get first dibs at this stuff because... I'll put it online, send out the email like, hey, you guys can buy these. And with my live streams, it's every Wednesday. That's typically when I update people. So, like, if I update you like, hey, these are not out until Saturday. And then tomorrow I release them, I can send out the email saying, hey, these are out. Check them. Check them out if you want to buy them, get them. Stuff like that. So, I guess that's my, my sales pitch is just sign up for the email. Like, I don't sell your email. You know, I don't spam it. I, I've sent a few three emails or two emails out so far since February. And um, I definitely do like one email a month of what the new products are on the website. So you can get like a quick view of like, this is what I'm now selling. So um, in case there was something you were keeping your eye open for, Hey, you can buy this now. And then when I do these super specials, it's gimmicky. I'm sure um, I can write an email and then send that out. Like, Hey guys, buy these green neon tetras for 50 cents a piece, you know, whatever it would be. And um, you can sign up through that. If you just go to the website, um, it should pop up a thing. It's, you know, after I think it's like five seconds, you know, sign up, you type in your email, that's it. And um, it's just, just for my use. It's not for some massive spam conspiracy crap. You know, it's just, just fishy things. I'm going to catch up on the chat. Uh... Oh, bearded fish keeper. <laughs> I, uh, sorry, I just now read it. I talked to you while I was at OFR. I got bristle nose. Yes. Um, I didn't put two and two together for a minute. Um, yeah, that's awesome. Send me a message. Uh, or email me. You can send me a message through Facebook or email me um, in case anybody else. I mean, obviously everybody else doesn't know um, bearded, bearded fish keeper is somebody that I met while I was at Ohio fish rescue. And I was talking about how I'm trying to buy hobbyist bread stuff. Um, depending on cost, you know, if I can buy uh, a koi angel fish for a dollar from my wholesaler, which is now hopefully going to be local. Um, I'm just not going to pay you $8 for an angel fish. Um, it doesn't make sense. You know, I can't pay retail or higher up in the wholesale cost for that. But if, if it makes sense for you, makes sense for me, then I would rather have hobbyist bread fish because it keeps you interested and uh, guarantees me good quality fish and stuff like that. I do pay more than wholesale for hobbyist bread. I just don't, I don't pay a whole ton more, you know? Um, but yeah, so bearded fish keeper, somebody I met and, um, he's doing bushy nose pluckos. And I said, Hey, if we can work out a deal. I would love to buy a bunch from you. So right now, um, I did place, I got my transship order last week. The Cardinal Tetras are doing fantastic. And, and those were the ones I was most worried about. The Tetras seem to usually be the ones that like die hard. And I've only had one loss and I cannot believe I've only ever had one loss out of that tank so far. And, um, so they're doing like extremely well. That's, I think there was 225 of them. And being that I got 224 alive right now, super ecstatic. Um, the ones that are doing not good are the Odessa barbs. I had a ton of losses in the bag and then I've since had, have had losses in the tank. Um, so the tanks, all the tanks are being treated. Um, I'm even treating tanks next to them just in case there's any cross contamination with, you know, equipment, nets, whatever. Um, I just keep treating the tanks that are adjacent just to make sure that nothing can spread through the fish room. And, um, it's expensive to treat tanks and stuff, but it's well worth it in the long run. But, um, the Ember Tetris look like they're doing fantastic. 
the glass bloodfin tetras are doing awesome. The Phoenix Rasboras, I gotta see how many I ordered. Because it doesn't seem like there's a whole lot. So I don't, I mean, I haven't seen any deaths, but they're also in Rack System 2, which has a bunch of Rams, uh, Rams horn snails. And being that they're so little, like if one were to die, the snails would just eat it overnight before I would see it. Um, the ones that are in there look like they're doing great. They're really small. Um, so even once they clear quarantine, I need to like power feed them and get some size on them. Um, I did the same thing in my glow light tetras. Uh, they came in really small and now they're like little piggies. They, they got some bellies on them. <laughs> they're uh, definitely healthy looking uh, for sure. Those in the Daniels, the zebra Daniels are just plump. They're whoever buys one of those two, you're getting some little plumpy fish uh, for sure. Um, the guppies I had brought in. Uh, there's, it's not the tuxedo blues. Uh, I want to say it's the uh, cobras. I can't remember if it's the green cobras. Um, they're popping fry out weekly now, um, which is great because I won't have to wholesale fish in for the, that line. I'll be able to just sell off what I've, I'm breeding here. Um, but the two of the females that I bought which you don't, you, you buy in pairs, so you never really know like what you're going to get. They're definitely older because um, they're they're quite large, but man, they're just pumping the fry out right now. So it's all good stuff. Uh, let me catch up. Do 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 do. Uh, Mark says, "I feel for people who don't have the work from home option." My brother. Uh, doesn't have that option. Yeah, I, I don't have that option, so um, we'll see what happens. And um, from interacting with everybody through the live stream, I do have quite a few people that are not from the United States, and so I don't know how things are going in your country. Um, I know pretty much everywhere is affected by this, but... Um, at least here they're talking about, um, like I know tax season has been extended till I want to say it's like July. My taxes are done. Um, I've already had like my refunds back and everything like that, but I know for people that didn't have that done, they don't have the stress. They've extended that. Um, I know the electricity company sent an email out and they're not like, they're not postponing your bills but they're not going to terminate your electricity during this time, which, you know, my biggest thing is, okay, so all these companies are saying that they won't penalize you for, like, not being able to pay, but you still owe them, right? My thing is, what's going to happen to everybody's credit scores during this? I'm a big credit score person. Like, I've always had really good credit, and I'm, I always focus on it. I've never had a late payment in my life. And um, just thinking like, hey, if we get, you know, no work at work, and but we're required to work, so you can't claim unemployment, but we're not getting paid. And let's say I can't pay cell phone bill or something stupid. Is that going to go as a late payment on my credit history or people more than what they think? Uh, do do do. Um, Mickey M says this week cost for brine shrimp eggs got raised from wholesalers with 25%. So it's gone up 25% over here. Same for you. Oh, question mark. This might be just an effect of global. Um, so when I buy my eggs, I buy like the can of it. And, um, right now I'm not really hatching any baby brine out. Um, because there's no like breeding projects I'm doing that require it. And I've kind of gotten everything that would, I would typically want on brine, like Cardinal Tetras, the Ember Tetras and the Phoenix Rasboras. They're all, when they're all tiny, that's like a super power feeder food, like the best, right? Well, I got them 
right onto the 614 fry food. So I've just been feeding them the fry food um, and they're all eating it. So I, I haven't had like a reason to hatch it other than um, like just to like try to bulk them up quicker. Um, but I don't, I honestly, I don't know what the current cost is for brine shrimp eggs because I haven't bought mine. I buy like a lot at a time. So it lasts me forever. I keep it in my refrigerator. I just realized I don't even have a picture of the fried food online. So I need to work on that. Uh, let me see. Mark says he's doing his last errands today. So a coworker um, sent up sent out a Snapchat picture of Sam's Club, which is like the bulk wholesaler place where you buy like bulk items of house goods, groceries, stuff like that. And the line was like wrapped around the building. So and that was pre the announcement of the state shutdown. So I can only imagine the hordes of people at the grocery store right now. And my aunt. So I've always been one that's pro being ready for things that could happen. Um, I have what like people call like the bug out bag. I have a, a book bag that has like clothing in it, um, some basic tools, waterproof matches, um, a walkie talkie that has uh, like weather channel and emergency radio on it. I've always had that for years. And my aunt, I haven't even gone to the grocery store since all this has happened. And I was talking to my aunt yesterday and she said, for somebody that's always so well prepared, how come you haven't gone to the grocery store like to get like stocked up? I'm like, because I was prepared before this even happened. Um, I always have like extra cans of food um, available just in case something happens. And you know, it could be just something as simple as a storm comes through and you lose power for a week because that's happened here before in the middle of winter. Um, an ice storm hit and took out like the whole city's power grid. And my parents were without power for. Like, I think it was like right around a week. I know my sister's house was in a newer neighborhood and had underground power lines, and, but they were still out of power for like three or four days. Um, so I just try to always stay prepared. I always keep my truck at least I have to tank of fuel in it at all times. Um, and right now, gas is super cheap. So I don't know what it is around your guys' area. Typically, for the last like month or so, it's been like mid two dollar range for uh, low grade, and now it's like a dollar. I think I saw a dollar seventy five yesterday. So super cheap. Uh, Zen Ginger's here. So I'm, I'm probably pretty far behind on the chat, but Zen's here. Super hot. Um, hot pockets are done. Um, super awesome to see you, Zen. She says the hot pockets are done. So lunchtime, I'm guessing. Pepland Creek Aquatics is here. Hello. Uh, Zen's on top of it. She posted a link to the contact page. So if anybody needs to get a hold of me, that's the way to go. Um, Jerry's here from Papa Shrimp Aquatics. And uh, Jerry, hope all is well with you. I saw that you had your roll of toilet paper with you. Um, I don't know if that was today or yesterday, but I saw that. It was pretty funny. I'm pretty sure you can probably take that one roll of toilet paper and go trade it for like a 125-gallon aquarium because... People are using toilet paper as gold right now, it seems. Uh, do, do, do. Uh, Bearded Fish Keeper says, I would rather work with you. I appreciate that, bud. Um, for sure. So, Punchy's here. So, Pam, I, uh, I saw the post about the live stream with uh, Haley, and I ended up getting involved which sucks because i was on the computer which is here uh working on the website and stuff last night and i meant to put the youtube up on that computer screen and i totally forgot about it um because i wanted to watch that and make fun of Haley. but i hope i hadn't even seen the replay of it yet so i'll probably do that later um but i hope all is well with you out out west pam
Uh, Peplum Creek Aquatic says, I wish you, I was closer to you. I could hook you up with fish. Yeah, I mean, I've, I've tried. I mean, I haven't tried all avenues locally. I've only talked to a few people about buying from them. Um, they're just kind of stuck on the upper end of, like, pay scale. And um, I just can't do that. So let me uh, keep going through here. Uh, Mickey M says, taxes were extended here in Sweden, too. Uh, government pay first days you report sick, so company doesn't have to do so. Yeah, I think that's basically what's going on here. Because typically there's like, I think a two week, at least a two week waiting period before you do like unemployment. Um, because they want you to try to get a job, obviously. But they completely waive that. So as soon as you sign up, you're supposed to be getting some benefits, I guess. Uh, Mickey says, might be the wholesaler... Uh, who raised prices due to shipping costs. So the problem with all this is flights right now. So anything that's imported uh, into the country, whether it's here or your country, um, flights are a problem. So my wholesaler list I got for fish this week was substantially lower than normal. And the wholesale, wholesale list is the fish that they have in their tanks ready to come to like, say like me. Um, and there's just no flights coming from the countries that are breeding these fish. So they said that hopefully that they'll be able to get more in as time goes on. But as of right now, everything's just kind of waiting on shipments of products and animals and stuff like that to get into the country. Um, LRB's here, Lucas. Um, how's it going, buddy? I'm sure you're staying busy with all the tanks and everything. LRP says five P's proper preparation prevents poor performance. Yep. I'm I, even my four wheeler is on the trailer loaded up and ready to roll out. If I need to go, um, already have a plan that if for whatever reason I need to leave my house, me and my dogs are going to my friends. They live out in the country and, um, they're prepared to have us all there and, just being prepared for whatever may happen. But, I mean, nothing's going to happen other than uh, good luck getting toilet paper, which that's like the last thing on my mind is toilet paper. Like, people should be buying food and stuff like that. Like, you can get away with no toilet paper if you have to. That's why you always have almond leaves <laughs> ready to go for your aquariums. Uh, Lucas, if you're still here, because um, I'm a little behind on chat, I was talking about I was at Agno Aquatics, and George was um, talking about you, how you were there before. Um, that's the first time I met him. Super nice guy. Um, I like the store. Nice little store. And uh, he helped me out. He gave me some good contact information uh, to source some good fish. Uh, do, do, do. Mickey says... Is all okay with you, Sarah and Wesley? I hope. And Lucas said we are we are all well over here. Thank you. Hope all is well with you. Lots of people fear the unknown. People just panic, and like this all started like at least a week ago, two weeks ago, with the whole toilet paper thing. Like sold out. Like everybody was selling out toilet paper. Um, my brother-in-law is a manager for Kroger, which if you're, I don't know if, I don't think Kroger is like a nationwide grocery chain, but it's like, it's a very large chain as far as volume, but they're definitely here in the Midwest. Um, he's a manager for them. And he said, it's not a supply issue. Like their supplies are still coming in. It's just people are panicking and just buying out toilet paper for whatever reason. And, um, if people would just treat this as nothing was going on, there'd be no issues. Yes, you're at home every day now. And maybe you need more food because maybe you're not going out to lunch with coworkers or something like that. But for people that like pack lunches every day, like this is no different. Just go to the store, get your normal stuff, and you'll be fine. 
Because I'm just thinking, like, there was a picture of a guy that had a shopping cart of bulk toilet paper from Sam's Club. And, like, it had to be hundreds and hundreds of rolls of toilet paper. And I'm just thinking to myself, how long would that take that family? Even if it's a family with five kids, how long is it going to take them to go through all that? Because I buy, like, a case from Amazon, like, once every six months. And that's, like, another thing. I don't need toilet paper because, like, three months ago, I bought a, cr uh, a crate, uh, a case of it. And that lasts me forever because I'd rather just buy a case of it. It's cheaper. And then I don't have to worry about it for six months. So I just wonder what people are going to do with 500 rolls or however many they bought. It's crazy. Punchy says, I am good, just in pain right now. So not right on top of chat. Why are you in pain? I obviously missed something. And... <laughs> Jerry's, oh crap, my chat just jumped. Where'd it go? Where'd it go? Where'd it go? Uh, Jerry said, just stopped in to say hi, be safe, and no, I won't trade my TB. You won't even trade it for like a 125? I mean, it's, I feel like TP could be a bargaining chip and get some new aquariums and see what else you can get out of it. I did see somebody in a neighborhood that's, it's not my neighborhood, it's the neighborhood next to us. Um, they have a table out front with toilet paper on it. And it says free TP. So for the people that can't get it, I thought that was very awesome that somebody um, did that. The only thing I can think of is that there's so many shitty people out there that somebody's going to like take all the rolls. It's just like individual rolls kind of stacked up in a pyramid. Um, someone's going to be that person that's going to like steal them all. Like take one or two rolls. Like you don't need the whole table, like help out the community. And <laughs> Pam says bathrooms have water. So that, that's my thing. I'm like, my thinking is like, worst case, shit hits the fan. T do your business and then go take a shower or something afterwards. Uh, LRB says, yeah, he's a good guy. Love his story. He's talking about uh, Georgia Agno Aquatics. Yeah, super helpful. Like he was like just pumping me full of information on... Um, different companies to try out and, and it turned out we actually I don't know if he uses them but he knows I, I, for some reason I'm trying to recall the conversation I think we use one of the same companies for wholesale products and um, he knew of a couple other companies I've used or, or currently use and then um, I gave him the company I use for my fish and he was going to check them out um, and then he gave me the companies of where he gets his fish from and I thought it was really awesome because people are, are funny with businesses about giving out uh, like sources and stuff. And um, he was, you know, very willing to help me, you know, grow my business and everything. So I thought it was super awesome. So I definitely plan on um, paying it forward and, you know, going back up there and maybe doing like some promotion, like video, like free video for him. Like, hey, like, come check this out. But I, I took a little bit of video I wasn't planning on to, but. Um, I just really want to go up there and kill some time at a local fish store. And, um, like I said, it'll be like a one minute video. I know, uh, Jimmy, so I was supposed to go to Jimmy's house, uh, Schwiski from aquarium co-op. I was supposed to go to flip aquatics and then go to Jimmy's house. But I'm pretty sure Jimmy slept in because, uh, I got the flips around 1130 and I had texted Jimmy like, Hey, I'll be there 1130. And I was just picking up the shrimp and filters and I was leaving and um, Jimmy didn't respond to like an hour later. Like, Hey, like you still have flips. I'm like, no, like on my way to Ohio fish rescue. And um, he was going up to Agno aquatics to look for some gobies. And um, I was like, cool. So I was like, I wonder where that is. So I Googled it real quick. And I was like 15 minutes away. I'm like, Hey, like when you go in there, I can meet you there. Like I'm 15 minutes away. Well, he was waiting for a FedEx package. So he didn't go up till later. But I was supposed to also go to Jimmy's house yesterday, but um, unfortunately, that just the time didn't meet up. Um, I think I was a little, a little too early for him. Um, do do do. <laughs> Zen says, "Oh no, I'm buying the toilet paper because I really like Charmin. I'm too sensitive for almond leaves." That's funny. 
Um, Mickey says uh, at SC Aquatics, shipping is falling, making more panic, I guess. You know, I, I guess I could see like, I don't, don't want to say small, smaller shipping companies. Like DHL is not a small company, but like DHL is not the company I think of when I think of shipping. Typically, it's like the big three I call it, you know, USPS, UPS, and FedEx. Um, when I was in my local store, USPS is who I ship with. I ship uh, three days or faster um, on all orders. So, um, you know, it, like, let me cover up the, the guy's address. Prior to mail three day, this is uh, Rapashi. So I want everything to get to people in three days or less. And depending on where they live, um, it might ship out like first class. And that's also based off of weight. It's so, like this package um, is first class. And it's like estimated, estimated to be there in like two days because they're close enough. Um, same thing with this package. It's first class. And I think this is also Rapashi. But first class is always three days and under to begin with. It's cost more. I think people think when they hear first class, they think of like ground shipping. Um, the post office has like a like economy shipping rate, um, which is I think five days. Um, first class is technically a step up. First class is basically priority mail, but for under 16 ounces. So under like a pound. If it's under a pound, it ships first class. Um, and anything above that, uh, weight tolerance is then technically priority mail, and then it could be three days and quicker. And I've only ran into one issue before, and that was actually with fish. I've talked about before. Um, it was a cluster F um, with a, something in West Virginia, the post office out there, uh, crushed a box of live fish. Um, I shipped a priority. West Virginia is one state over. They border Ohio. And I shipped it out on Wednesday and it didn't get to the guy until Monday and um, total loss. And that was um, the guy's name's Jerome and he's been a super huge supporter. Um, you know, he didn't blame me for anything like that because obviously the post office crushed it and somehow they lost the package for extra days. I reshipped out everything he had ordered. You know, I paid for, the replacement products, replacement shipping, everything, you know, so he got what he ordered and he knows like that's, that's a big burden on a small business when it's like fish and stuff. And he's like placed countless orders more. I got two orders in the queue to go out to him. Um, once the fish, he ordered some of those Odessa barbs. Unfortunately, they're doing terrible right now. So his orders delayed until they go through quarantine and they're healthy. Um, Cause I'm not going to ship them out until they're, they're healthy. And um, he ordered like the blue dream shrimp and I forget what else. So some nearite snails, like he's, he's got a, a large livestock order and he keeps reordering for me. So that's huge. Like repeat customers is my goal. And I think that's any business's goal, but you know, he's been really helpful with, you know, keeping me going and I appreciate it a lot. Um, Mickey M says, are you okay, Steve? I'm okay. Yeah, no, I just, um, my state, you said that you were hanging laundry when the stream started. My state's going into lockdown, um, tomorrow at midnight, tomorrow night at midnight. So like technically Tuesday at 1201, um, the state's under lockdown. So all businesses will be shut down unless you're deemed essential. My eight to five job is a mechanic. I work for Audi and, the transportation industry is deemed essential. So we will still be open. And I was just saying that SC Aquatics is in my mind, essential for the hobby. Um, people need their medications, their fish foods. So, um, I'm still operating as normal. The only thing is, is that replenishing products, um, might be an issue. So anything that's selling out right now, um, I don't have anything on order the wholesalers 
are kind of up to their owners. Um, the pet industry is kind of deemed essential um, throughout the country, uh, but it's up to the business owner. So if the wholesaler says, we don't want to risk anybody getting the virus, um, they can shut down. And with that, they're not getting their stocks replenished. And um, so things are just, um, are going to go out of stock and I won't be able to do anything about it for a while. I've already tried, I'm running extremely low on the Fritz medications, um, Paracleanse, Expel P, and Marison. I, when I get to a certain inventory point, I reorder and the wholesalers are out of stock on those items. So once I'm out, um, I won't be able to get any more in for a little while. Um, I'm keeping my eye open though. As soon as that they get them, I can try to reorder them. Um, this last transship order was supposed to be my last fish order, but um, I end up placing one more order for some fish and we'll see what they have in stock. Um, I placed it saying I want this, 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 and we'll see what I end up getting. And that, that wholesaler ships out on Monday. So I'll have that on Tuesday. They overnight it to me. But I'm physically doing okay. My parents, my parents are kind of in a tough spot right now. They are, um, they live in Florida and they live in a, I call it like the senior community where like the homeowners association requires everybody to be like 55 and up for that community. So you don't have like young kids in there. Um, so to own a house there, you have to be at least 55. And so we all know that elderly people are more prone to it. And unfortunately they had a confirmed case and the guy passed away. And now there's seven people in their community that have been confirmed with it. Uh, so that's not good. So my parents are doing like self quarantine to keep away from people. And um, my mom's side of the family has heart condition. So that's not good, but she's doing good. Like she's not sick or anything. The kind of worrisome part is my dad had pneumonia last week. And he still kind of has it, but the CDC is going to their community to um, test them. And they're actually starting that today or yesterday. I think they started yesterday. I think my dad's getting tested today. And then um, since my mom's not showing any like signs of being sick or anything, I think she's on like kind of the back burner. I think she gets tested like in a week or two, but they're going through anybody that's showing any kind of flu symptoms any kind of colds, they're testing all those people because that community got hit hard with it. And it's basically all retired people. So, like, it's all being that they contracted it through somebody. Like, it's kind of crazy because, you know, it's not like they're all out partying it up at, you know, the nightclubs and stuff. But. Da -da. LRB says media doesn't talk about the gun stores selling out, but they push the teepee. Yeah. So I know the gun stores here had like weeks ago had lines and I'm a pro gun person. Um, I have multiples and um, I've always, I've always been pro pro guns and it's kind of, you know, watching people there's, there's always memes going out and, you know, it's funny, like, it gives me a chuckle when I see some of the memes about how everybody that used to be, like, anti-guns are, like, all of a sudden, like, why can't I buy one online and have it shipped to my house? Like, hello, like, that's why, that's, like, gun safety, like, you don't want people to just be able to buy a gun and have it shipped to their house. And um, there's a lot of people, I think, that were looking at it in a negative light and now kind of see, like, well, I could see why somebody would want one. Um I'm, I don't have any fear of needing that at all. Um, I don't think nothing bad like that's going to happen. And I've been prepared enough that if something does like that happen, I, I'm prepared. But nothing like that will, will happen. Um, uh, Zen says people... 
were also mass buying and then price gouging others on the internet. Real life trolls. Yeah, I mean, technically, like it could be, it could be very beneficial for a business to make money off of this unfortunate thing that's going on. Um, I just hope that businesses don't price gouge anybody and that they, you know, do the right thing. But I've seen like Facebook Marketplace. I've seen people selling hand sanitizer, like a, a four dollar bottle listed for a hundred dollars and stuff like that. Um, you know, some people are still going to try and make their money, I guess. Uh, Pam says, I have an abscess tooth, face swollen, pain shooting up my nose right now. Oh, that does not sound fun. I, I was, you know, honestly, I'm glad that's that. And you weren't going to say something like I have the flu right now. Um, I would rather have you have a tooth problem than a flu problem. But I hope that, um, that you feel better with that soon. Because I know like anytime, anytime something happens with my teeth, it just gives me like a, like a sinus headache and all that. And like, no, that's fun. Uh, Mark says I've had, I have a lot of dry beans, rice, flour, etc. My local food co-op has a 10% discount bulk foods in October. Got most of my supplies back then. Uh, LRB says, people talk about it here, but not on the media. The media is, I could go off on a tangent on the media. The media is self, in my opinion, is self-benefiting them, their agenda. Um, I don't trust what the media says, and they, you know, they're trying, they're trying to make things sound worse than they are. Uh, I'm not trying to downplay the virus or anything like that. Um, it's serious. My, you know, my parents are in the middle of all of this right now. Um, so it's hitting home for me for sure. But the media has their own agenda and just know that. Uh, do, do, do. Can you get strange situations when people get stressed? Uh, if so, no world for kids. They brought it up in Swedish TV. <laughs> then said, shit hits the fan. That's only if you spray the water the wrong way. Yep. <laughs> Mark says phone books and newspaper are viable substitutes for TP. So yes, but who here, who here gets a newspaper and phone books though? I think they stopped doing phone books, at least locally here, like a while ago. I haven't seen a phone book in years, I feel like. And newspaper, I used to get the newspaper on Sundays um, because I was using it. I would read it once in a while, but I was mainly using it for like shipping insulation and um, car projects using it to mask off car stuff to spray paint. And, um, it's a cheap way to get masking paper. It's basically what I was using them for. And then, um, I think the price went up and then it became to where I had like a big, huge bin full of newspaper that I didn't know what to do with. I was recycling them, but, um, get, it got to the point where I just, I just didn't want it anymore. So I don't, I don't get the newspaper or anything like that. Um, there's an older guy down the street that I think gets like the daily newspaper. Um, but I think he's also retired and like has the time to read it. Um, I typically don't listen to the news because you don't know what's true and what's not. I typically let social media alert me to anything that's happening and then I can, uh, educate myself further. <laughs> Pam says bills. Use your bills for TP. Yes. For sure. And somebody, I saw somebody who was talking about um, they were possibly thinking about like not taxing the month's paychecks. And uh, one of my friends is like, yeah, don't tax me this year and we'll call it even. Like, don't send me any stimulus checks 
just don't tax me this year. And I was like, can you imagine? Well, everybody's in a different situation. Um, I can only imagine if I didn't get taxed for like my entire year working for Audi. Oh man, the fish tank game would be insane. I think if I didn't get tax, I'd probably pay somebody to go to Lucas's house and finish his backyard ponds for him. Cause now he's going on like what a year now, Lucas, and you don't have that done. Come on, buddy, get out there, get some sunshine, move some rocks, get these ponds up and running. Cause we all want to see this backyard. <laughs> Instead of my dog ate my homework, you can just say I was out of TP. So speaking of dogs eating homework, here's Charlotte's story for you. I don't know if I've mentioned this before or not, but Charlotte ate a $50 bill like months ago. I, I don't know if I've, I've told you guys this or not. Um, I came home and there was half a $50 bill. And I was like, it's not like a dollar. It's not like a $5 bill, 50 bucks. I'm like, that's, that's a decent chunk of change. That's like a lot of Tetras right there. And I've never had to deal with like mutilated money before, but I remember when I was a kid, the same thing happened with the golden retriever. She shredded it. She didn't eat it. She shredded it. And back then the bank said that if you had more than like 51% of the bill, they'd replace it. So as long as you had more than half, they would replace it. So I'm looking at this thing. I'm like, of course it's the small side. It's like 45% of the bill. Like, whoa, like the other half's gone. She ate it. Well, like months later, I went to move something and there was like the tiniest piece of that bill I found. And I still had the other half. I put it together. I'm like, hey, this is like 60% of the bill. So I went to the bank. I was like, hey, I took my bill. I'm like, my, I, this is going to be funny, but my dog ate this. Like, do you guys replace me to later money? And the teller was like, looked at it and she's like, well, you need to have both serial numbers from both halves. I was like, well, I thought I just needed to have like 60% of the bill. And she goes, well, where's, where's the rest of it? And I was like, my dog ate it. And the other, there's like a second teller. And she was like, she like, she ate it, ate it. And I was like, yeah, she ate it. It's gone. She's like, well, you could wait around. I'm like, wait around to go dig through poop. I'm like, well, first of all, she ate it like months ago. So it's, it's long gone, but I'm like 50 bucks is not worth me going through poop for it. Like, no, that's no. And, um, so she was talking about, we ended up talking about the dog and I was like, yeah, it's my, my Dalmatian. She's deaf. And, um, like the teller was like, Oh, like, Oh, she sounds like a sweetheart or whatever. Ends up going to talk to the bank manager and tells her, like, this deaf dog ate the $50 bill and the owner could even yell at her <laughs> to stop her because she's deaf and, like, all this stuff. And the bank teller was like, yeah, just replace it. Or the bank manager was like, yeah, just replace it. So I knew up getting a new $50 bill. But um, that's a, a Charlotte story for you. And um, sidetracked off the, the dog ate my homework post, but. Pep, Peplin Creek says at, at Punchy Paints, just drag your butt on the carpet or outside in the grass. Uh, Mark says DHL is large or is huge outside the U.S. Yeah, I mean, like, I rarely see a you, uh, DHL doesn't have like the trucks. They have like vans here, and they're not big at all. Um, yeah, it's mainly FedEx, UPS, and. Uh, USPS. Oh, I try to scroll and then it makes like the chat jump. Um, where did I go? Uh, Terry's Tropical Tanks. Hello, hello. Uh, LRB says India is pretty chill right now. Had a little ice and snow, but most all melted. So you, Friday, I don't know. I don't know, Lucas, how it was in Indy, but Friday it was like 70 degrees here. Um, it was like high 60s for sure. And then 
that was Friday. Saturday, go up to Iowa Fish Rescue, and it was snowing up there. It was like 31 degrees, I think. I'm like, going from 70 to 31 and snowing sucks. And then today it's, I don't know what the temperature is, but it's okay. It's supposed to warm back up, though. Uh, Nurse Becca swung through. She's heading out with the dogs. I um, just wanted to say hi and be well, people. Uh, Nurse Becca, enjoy the sunshine while you have it. I saw you won some fish, I think, too, off Dance Fish. That's awesome. <laughs> LRB says, I hate how they always put me in top chat and not live chat. Do they have a permanent setting for that, or do you always have to change it? So, uh, LRB, I, I've been obviously following you for a very long time. That's like a real struggle for you, bud. Um, for uh, do, going from the desktop, it puts me in a live chat automatically. Um, as far as mobile, I think it does top chat. Um, I think I always, I always have to switch it to live chat on my mobile. But at least from the desktop streaming, it automatically puts me in. Got PVC plastic on me, so I was drilling pipes. Um, but sorry, uh, desktop always puts me in live chat. Luckily, uh, Mickey says Sweden is mainly living on export to the rest of the world, so many companies are now missing orders. Uh, Peplin Creek Aquatic says, is Chewy the cheapest price you have found for Tetra Color Tropical Granules? Yes, definitely. Used to buy from Junko by the case, but now Chewy beats them. <laughs> Mr. Fish Sir says, how does your fertilizer compare to Easy Green? So it's an all-in-one, the same as the Easy Green. The actual ingredients, which are listed on the website, um, you can compare those directly to Easy Green. Um, they're going to vary a little bit. The closest, I would say, that my fertilizer is compared to the Tropical brand all-in-one, um, which is big overseas. Um, it's really not that big in the United States. Um but it would be more comparable to theirs. Um, I have Nilo Aquatics uh, make my fertilizer for me uh, because I'm not privy on how to mix everything together to make the fertilizer. So my uh, fertilizer is made for me by Nilo Aquatics. Um, and he is, if you guys don't know, he's the guy that does like the Thrive um, All-in-One, Thrive Plus, um, the Algaecide Enhance, which uh, it's up there. I have it. Um, I'm doing some testing on this tank. I moved the beta out. The beta's in this uh, pitcher. And because this tank was getting algae, so I'm doing some video testing on algicides. And um, I didn't want the beta fish in there because I don't like using algicides um, with fish because algicides are, are very harsh. Um, but I wanted to do some testing. So um, I'm testing this tank and I kind of want to redo this tank anyway. So once this testing is done, I think I'm going to tear it down and rescape it. And um, the beta will have its nice little home back. But um, I would have to see back to that question. I, I would have to see the ingredients to uh, easy green, but I'm pretty sure they're very similar, you know, you're going to get the same, same results. I know Oddball Aquatics uses my fertilizer now, and one of her coworkers who works at Aquatic Arts um, is using it. And I think she said that he's almost out and needs to reorder. Um, but it's it's like the standard all in one. You, you dose. You want to try to target like twenty parts per million. Um, I typically target 30 parts per million up to 40. Um, and then in my indoor plant pond, the plywood box I built, um, I'm dosing this daily to keep up with the demand of the plants on that tank because 
that system or that system, that tank is under 24 hour lighting. And so the plants are getting all the light they need to grow. Um, I have to fertilize them daily to give them all the nutrients they need to grow. grow. And I found that, you know, I've, I've read a bunch of, you know, people's articles on doing, you know, light cycles are best for the plants. And over the last, I don't know how long it's been now since I did rack system too, well over a year now, um, I've been running 24 hours of lighting on my rack system too, on the lower rack for the plants. And I've had no adverse effects other than duckweed. Like once you get duckweed and you run 24 hour lighting, that sh- grows like nonstop. And um, <laughs> Lucas, when he was here doing his live stream, he even was like talking about how big like the duckweed like leaves are like they're big like they're when you're pumping when you're giving them plants as much light as they could need and you're giving them all the nutrients they need it's just like super growth and um i'm sure there's someone that's scientific out there saying no plants need to have a rest phase or whatever but in my experience over the last year i've been able to run lights on them 24 hours a day and as long as i'm providing them nutrients they're fine and with that pond I built the wood box, the wooden aquarium. Um, I have to dose like they're so efficient with 24 hour lighting that I have to dose heavy fertilizer because if I don't, I'll start seeing nutrient deficiencies in them. Um, the hornwort, I think it was the hornwort. Um, we starting to get transparent leaves, which is a, a first indicator that all right i'm i got nutrient deficiencies going on here and um like if anything ever turns like yellow on you um aquarium cope has a really good article on deficiencies and how to like visually see what your plants are doing to kind of guesstimate what they're deficient on and um so i'm dosing every day on the pond and it's not ideal for a hobbyist to have to dose every single day but I think typical hobbyists aren't leaving their lights on 24 seven. I'm purposely doing it to grow the plants as quickly and as big as possible. Cause I'm selling them. And these plants are coming from Florida, which means they're all going to be immersed grown. And I'm trying to get them all submerged grown. Zen says, Oh no, it's definitely hitting retirement communities hard for sure retirement like senior citizens um people with any kind of immune system uh deficiencies uh, pregnant ladies um rob from flip aquatics his wife has an immune system deficiency uh, like a disease or, or whatever but her immune system is lower than the average person so when i went up there yesterday i i you know i didn't go into the building um doing the social distancing. So, you know, Rob and I talked for a few minutes. It was freezing outside. Um, we, we talked for a few minutes outside, you know, at a distance from each other, but, um, she was there working inside. So I didn't go inside or anything like that, um, uh, because she's very susceptible to getting, um, the flu or the virus. So I, I messaged her this, um, this morning saying that, Hey, you know, once this is all over, um, I'll come back up and um, we'll have a drink together. Uh, Peplin says there's a hundred round limit in Wisconsin right now. I don't, I don't know what, as far as that goes, I don't know what's going on in Ohio. I know that the stores have had lines. Um, I don't know if they're doing limits on anything. I, I've been stocked up on ammo for years. Um, I'm like I said on that on that whole I can go way off that way with that story, but I am well prepared for anything that may happen. But nothing's gonna happen, guys, so don't worry, don't stress. Uh Zen says Kroger started limiting purchases for that reason.
Uh, LRB said at Peplin, there's a lot of great people. It's the crappy few that makes us look bad. That is that is true, Lucas. Larry D's tanks and more is here. He said, Hey, yes, see him. How's it going, Larry? Larry D, hope all is well with you. Come on, I'm trying to catch up to the bottom of the chat. Um, let me see. LRB says, I'm not going out in the winter. He must be talking about the ponds. Buddy, I know you got a jacket somewhere. Hard work will warm you up. You can't say rum won't warm you up either, bud. Just put a jacket on, do some hard work, drink some rum. You'll be sweating. And then you'll take the jacket off because you don't want to sweat in the winter because that's a good way to get sick. Uh, Punchy said things Timing sucks Lucas I am not able, about to wait. I am not about to go to a clinic To get antibiotics So I don't, I'm assuming I'm guessing country wise probably similar We're all going on to Like teledoctor or teledoc To where you're like if you're sick And if you need anything you basically like FaceTime or Skype your doctor now um, our health insurance was pushing this like over a year ago because it's free on our health insurance plan at work. Um, they would rather have you for anything other than emergency video, your doctor, and, um, they can talk to you and prescribe your medications and then, um, go to the pharmacy that way. Um, I would recommend only going through a drive through though. So that way you don't have to go inside and be in a line next to people and stuff, but. <laughs> Pam says, I've been having a shot of fireball before bed the last couple of nights so I can sleep. Um, Pam, have you ever tried Jack Fire? So it's like fireball, but like fireball for me, like has that syrupy kind of like aftertaste to it. Like, I don't know, it tastes syrupy to me. Jack Fire is like that still that cinnamon taste, but it's like just regular whiskey. It doesn't leave that syrupy taste. If you haven't had it, I would try it. Maybe get yourself a small bottle in case you don't like it, but um, try it. See if you like it. Might help you sleep. Zen says, I mean, isn't Everclear just moonshine light? Um, basically. Um, we can't get Everclear here in Ohio. But if you drive an hour and a half south, you can hit the Kentucky border and get it. Um, but typically, you just get some Everclear, um, get some apple juice and cinnamon sticks or apple cider and just make some apple pie. Um, pretty good. Especially when it's warm. Like when it's fresh off the stove, it just warms you up. That Lucas, that's what you need. Let's, if we go into shutdown, Lucas, and actually, if I get shut down to where I don't have to go to work, maybe we can do a uh, Lucas Brett's, what is it now? Natural Aquarium Keeping Adventures, and an adventure could be making a natural moonshine, uh, like, distillery. What do they call that? Like, we got, like, we actually distill it. You got like the thumper keg and all that or whatever. We should do that. Make some apple pie. <laughs> Recon's here feeding fish and lurking. It's the best thing to do. Um, I think Aquarium Co-op is playing out on my TV when I was building the, the beta rack. <laughs> Recon says attention turns back to screen when hearing ammo. Plenty of ammo here. Also, uh, 
Uh, Mr. Fish Sir says, thanks for the info on your fertilizer. Yeah, I, I know I'm behind on the chat, but if you just go to 614fish.com, um, let me verify. It's on the bottle, and it's also, yeah, it is on the website. You can see all the ingredients and the percentages of it. And um, most people, they should list um, what's in the fertilizer. I would hope they would. And then you can compare it if you're looking for um, maybe something with higher iron, lower iron. Um, there's only so much iron you can put into an all-in-one. So typically those numbers are lower. And that's why you will almost always see a separate iron um, fertilizer, like a, a, a dosage of just iron. Um, cause it's hard to condense it into the all in one. And then most fertilizers also have copper and everybody kind of freaks out when they hear copper and when it's shrimp and snail safe, totally shrimp and snail safe. Um, the percentage is, is so, so tiny that it has no effect. Uh, Punchy says, I have fireball to coffee when I have it. <laughs> Krista Smith, it was nice to be a part of your chat. I will try to catch it next time. Uh, Mickey says, all countries in Europe follow stats from Italy and Spain right now. So a total lockdown hopefully will not occur here. We can all see what we need to do without government interacting. So there's a lot of dumb people here. People that are sick, that are still going out. Um, I heard a, uh, of a case where a guy was sick and... Knew he had the virus, but still went out to go. I want to say it was like some stupid like convention or something. Like that's just people are dumb. Not everybody's dumb. I'm not calling you guys dumb. I'm just saying there's really dumb people out there. Uh, Larry D. So Larry D. Says if we get shut down here in Ohio, I'll go nuts. Um, first of all, I didn't know you were in Ohio, but second of all, we did get shut down. Um, apparently, you didn't. You can go turn on the news. It's been on 4, 6, and 10. Um, Governor DeWine came out today, and we are shutting down. It goes into effect tomorrow at 11.59 p.m. So come Tuesday, only essential businesses will be open. Anybody that's not essential is shut down. They're saying that you need to stay home. Um, it's not illegal. You can still go outside and exercise. Um, I see people, you know, out jogging and stuff. Um, but Ohio is sh shut down starting tomorrow night, buddy. So hop on to, um, the news channel and, or, um, their websites. And uh, I'm just my camera system was like, hey, there's something going on in your driveway. So I was just checking that. Uh, Mickey M says, our Swedish prime minister just said, we really need to use self-discipline now. I actually think it will work. Media reports from Italy is scary as hell. Um, there's just really dumb people that are going to make this like drag out way longer than it needs to. And, um, you know, if everybody self quarantined for two weeks or three weeks, whatever the period is, and we could stop it from spreading, like be much better off, but there's just going to be people that are sick and, like I see all these spring breakers that are still like out partying. Luckily in Florida, they, they closed down like a bunch of the beaches and stuff like that. Um, but like people are still out partying it up and they're just, they don't understand that they might be young and healthy, but they can still transfer that virus to people that are not. Uh, 
you know, maybe I, I don't even want to say it's like natural selection because there's a lot of people that are affected by this that are doing the right thing and they don't deserve this. <laughs> Larry says, what? I need to watch the news then. Dang. Yeah. So, um, tomorrow. And I would say get your shopping done, but it, I mean, you're not locked in. You can still do your grocery shopping. You still, uh, go to the pharmacy. Gas stations are staying open. Um, repair centers are staying open. Um, that's dependent on the business owner. And as far as I know, our service center is staying open. Um, so, I, I, yeah, I don't know. I was just getting text messages from the family scene. If there was anything new, but. Uh, LRB. It's not a natural selection if it comes from a facility. I have a video for you, buddy. I'll, uh, I'll text it to you um, after this. And it's just kind of a numbers video. It's not some crazy conspiracy um, or anything like that. It's it's a numbers video about the stock market, and um, it was it was an interesting like eight minute video. But uh, I'll send that to you. I know you. I know you'll probably enjoy stuff like that. Okay, so here we go. Almost Dawn says, Pennsylvania has been shut down since Thursday, but honestly, it looks like Christmas at Walmart, so I'm not sure what the point is. The, this is the problem with people. Uh, in my opinion, people are freaking out, and if people would treat this like if nothing was going on, like not as far as like quarantine, but if you treated the grocery store as nothing was happening, there wouldn't be an issue. Do your normal shopping, what you would need for that week, and everybody would continue doing the same thing, and it wouldn't be an issue. But everybody's panicking, like, thinking it's World War 22, and they need to stock up on every single item in the world. And this is when you have, like, you have all these crowds trying to stock up. Like, you're talking about trying to do social distancing, distancing but you got... 300 people in the grocery store right now, you know, it's probably, it's, it, it's not probably, it's not helping. So all it takes is one person that has it and they're spreading it around and our like state health doctor lady person, I don't know her name. I was talking about, um, you know, they're going to see more people doing like homemade masks. And I saw on the Facebook groups, there's um, a few ladies that are making masks for people. They're like sewing them and stuff. I thought it was really awesome. And I, you know, if, if somebody was good with the stuff and you're stuck at home, this might be a good opportunity to make a few bucks, you know, like I'm not saying gouge everybody, but if you could sell a mask for five bucks or something, and it costs you three bucks in materials and you got nothing else to do. Like, why not? Um, but she said that since this virus, you know, is transferred airborne, she said, you know, use a bandana, stuff like that to, you know, help block it. And um, so, yeah. You don't need, technically, if you don't, you know, a bandana is going to be better than nothing. Is what I got out of that. So, think of that, too. Okay, so here, here's a good thing. So Tiffany said, being home more, I decided to move up my plans to start my fish tank now instead of this summer. I got 20 gallon from the dollar per gallon sale. That's This is a, a good time to do your, your spring cleaning on anybody that's got a fish room. And, you know, I, I'm not really off of work yet. So um, I was busy all day yesterday driving all over the state. But today... I'm working on the beta barracks. I want to get that um, up and running or at least testing the water pump idea with using the power head 
and see if that works because I really want to get those betas out of their jars this week and into tanks and get those tanks planted and up and running. Um, even if I don't have the filtration on the sump running, at least having the water volume and be able to change all the water out from one tank instead of all these jars would be awesome. But I have so much filter media here. I got bags of filter floss. I have the, the media pads. Um, you know, I could immediately have filtration going. All right, so Zen, Zen has a thing where it says, I feel at very minimum a bandana keeps you from touching your face. Maybe. I have a problem with doing this, and I'll admit it. I touch my beard a lot and you know, I've been home all day, so it's no, not a problem here, but at work, you know, I have to like keep it in my head. Don't touch your beard. It's not really, I don't really touch my beard at work because I'm not sitting there being like the world's most interesting man. And I'm trying to ponder something, but, um, oh, here comes Havana and Charlotte. girls doing probably out there chewing stuff while i'm not watching did i mention she got into some of the botanicals i was i don't know if i was doing a live stream or if i was just working on the computer um i heard them chewing something i just thought they had toys you should have a little bit of a cough did you eat something you weren't supposed to um Got off the computer, I turn around, and there's alder cones. Like a little breadcrumb trail of alder cones throughout the house. She got into uh, my bucket of alder cones. So that was awesome. Why are you, why are you coughing? What'd you eat? You're coughing and wagging your tail at the same time. I don't know what the think of that <laughs> yeah so zen says oh no charlotte what did you do look yeah so she's coughing like she ate something and she did this before when she ate styrofoam so i buy like four by eight sheets of st st styrofoam to uh cut in wine boxes when i ship out fish and sh i came out all like as long as she doesn't puke on me, I'm good. Um, I came out to the family room one day and looked like, like you know how like when styrofoam breaks up and you get all those little tiny styrofoam balls everywhere. And she was coughing like this because she inhaled styrofoam. There's a call from the alder, alder cones. Uh, the alder cones were like, it was a few weeks ago. Hey, she got a doggy cold. <laughs> Almost done. There's no way. Look how cute and innocent that face is. That's what everybody says. Uh, Haley, every uh, not every time she's here, but when she was here the other week with Lucas, she kept saying she was going to steal her and that this is her dog. She is very cute, but man, she can be uh, mischievous here once in a while. What are you doing, Vanna? And then the good one's the pity. <laughs> well, why don't you go get some water? She's stretching now. We're at on time. Hour and 45 minutes. See, I kind of like these random, very random live streams. Oh, you know what? I didn't even realize it's after five. They want they want some food. This is like exactly when I get home from work. Um, I get off at five. I work like five minutes away. Um, so I'm usually home like right now. So that's why they're in here. They're on that like internal clock. They know I should be home feeding them right now. Hi. Okay. 
All right. Well, um, I think I'm going to go feed these girls. Havana, do you want some Dindin? Do you want Dindin? Where are you? Do you want some Dindin? Do you want Dindin? Oh, God. Ripping computer wires off. Um, I'm going to go feed them, and I'm going to get back to working on the beta tanks. Do you want Dindin? Usually she barks. What? What? There we go. Um, so, anyways, I hope everybody stays safe out there. Please use common sense. Um, <laughs> Zen says, thanks for the impromptu stream. Uh, feel free to do more during the craziness. We're all bored. If I get a day off of work, um, I will try to do some random streams. But uh, right now, I'll plan to do my normal live stream on Wednesday, Wednesday night, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time for anybody that's overseas. And um, yeah, so everybody stay safe. This is a good time to rescape tanks. Spend some time with your fish. Maybe do some gravel vacuuming and stuff like that. And um, check out other YouTube channels. I'm sure that everybody's going to be making content during all this. So, uh, Tiffany, if you ever need help, uh, go to the website. My contact information is on there. Shoot me an email if you have any questions. Um, and I will try to help you out any way I can with you setting up your new tank and everything. <laughs> But uh, all right, guys, I'll see you later. Have fun if you can and uh, stay safe and see ya.